Welcome back. Hour two, midday, Super Talk Mississippi. Gerard and Rhino in the Super Talk studios. Joining us now, Paris Denard, RNC national spokesperson. Thanks for coming on, Paris. Thanks for having me. You bet. So, man, there's so much uh, going on these days. But uh, most recently, we had the Democrats uh, voting to raise the debt ceiling. I believe that just got through the House after having passed the Senate. Now it's headed to Joe Biden's desk for signature. I, it just doesn't seem like there's there's any appetite to un, undo this spiral, this out of control uh, debt, and this just uh, tendency to just drop more money into the economy, courtesy of the government. Uh, what do you think about that? I think ultimately the American people are going to have to decide what they want to do in terms of uh, these members of Congress who have been put in place to, and that are voting on these bills uh, and that are passing these, these laws that are expanding the debt and that are uh, contributing to what I believe is uh, rising inflation that is not transitory, that is not temporary, that is going to go well into next year. And I think this is part of what the 2022 election is going to be about. I think the American people are going to say, were we well served by all of this excess spending? The American people are going to ask, was the the, the bills that were, were the bills that were passed beneficial to my family uh, temporarily or long term? And I think by and large, the American people are going to say no. I think the American people are going to look at what's been passed and say that it has not done anything to really improve their lot. Uh, when you look at the cost of gasoline, inflation, the fact that there's still an open border, uh, which is causing uh, so many uh, other issues to come up, rise, like uh, all of the things that are happening when it comes to fentanyl uh, coming over the border, the opioid deaths increasing, uh, violence and crime across the country with the Democrats still pushing deep on the police. So I think we have to look at it holistically. And I think the American people are going to look at this holistically and say, were we better served by having a Democrat in the White House, the Democrats control the House and the Senate. I think they're going to reject that. Yeah, it just seems like that ultimately, uh, Paris, when voters go to the ballot box and they cast their, their ballot, that they tend to do that contrast in their head. I mean, I think that's just human nature and the way people function and the way they cast their votes. And we all know that it's that it's that that 20 percent or so in the independent category that sway those elections one or the other. The polls don't look good for the president, for the Democrats, for the vice president in particular, with respect to uh, the the nation as a whole and voters as a whole across the political spectrum, but in particular amongst the independents. Well, look, we know that independents are a significant voting block, and a lot of people are choosing not to identify with either party. Uh, but I think that they're going to look at what is happening. A lot of people vote about how they feel, right? They look at they, they vote about how they feel in their community, how they feel about the jobs that they're in, how they feel about the economy, how they feel about the safety of their children, that the quality of the education of their children. And these independents are going to look at this and say, I want to give each person an equal shot, Democrat and Republican, work for my vote. And I think if they do that contrast that we were talking about earlier, comparatively looking at how things were in their personal lives under Republican uh, leading, or how their lives are right now with Democrats leading, I think even those independents are going to look at where the Democrats are pushing a more progressive, uh, this woke, uh, this very, uh, some call it socialist uh, type of policies. And they're going to say, this is not where we want to be. I'm going to give the Republican Party either a first look or a second look, because I think that looking at the contrast on the whole, especially from a policy standpoint, my life, my lot was better when Republicans were putting in place conservative principles that advanced uh, some goals and policies that were more beneficial to my life, my community, and my my friends and my yeah. family. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And uh, the thing that bothers me is that the key piece of the Biden domestic agenda, this Build Back Better plan, which they're, they're just relentlessly pushing – even in the wake of we had a CPI report last week, inflation higher than expected and, and, and clearly continues to, to trend upward. We had the producer price index, which came out, I think, Monday. And, and that, of course, measures the cost of inputs to the production process. That ultimately finds its way down to the cash register at the retail sale, point of sale. And then this, this morning we got uh, uh, declining retail sales numbers, really fell quite uh, quite a bit short of what economists expected. 
And Biden and Pelosi in particular are telling us if we pass this bill, this will just put more money in uh, folks' pockets and it'll offset these rising costs of inflation. Wages aren't keeping up and even all that welfare won't cover it. Uh, Joe Manchin seems like uh, he maybe is our only hope. What are you hearing? Well, look, I think oh, this is what I'm hearing. And let me break it down for your for your viewers and your listeners. It ain't working. That's what this boils down to. You know, we can talk about the, what the economists say. We can talk about what the projections show. At the end of the day, the, your your viewers, your listeners know it ain't working. When it goes to the grocery, when they go to the grocery store, they see prices are up. Prices have been up month after month. When they look at trying to get a job, they look at the unemployment. They look at the fact that employers small business owners they're trying to get workers they know that this economy is not working and even if you subscribe to the thought of having some type of benefit or some type of bonus or some type of cash influx from the federal government that doesn't last right. that's not something that's part of a long-term strategy and so i think when you have people like mansion i think that's going to play well for independents who say look listen, listen. This is a Democrat from West Virginia who's willing to stand up to his party and say what you all are doing are, is wrong. It's not going to work. And he's going to hold the line. He's going to and many Republicans are going to stand with him in terms of not making sure that the get, Democrats get their way and having this out of control spending that doesn't do anything but add to the debt and add to the tax burden on the American people. I just saw a study that showed that even for middle class income workers, that child care is going to go up. Child yes. care. So the, how is that building back better when you're going to have par parents and women in particular who have, have disproportionately suffered in this economy and this pandemic because they've had to stop working to take care of their children because schools have been closed and, and all of the things that have been happening. And now you're going to say the, the price, the cost of child care is going to increase because of this. This is not what they're telling you. This is not the spin because ultimately this is what happens. The reality doesn't match the rhetoric and more yeah. and more people are listening to the rhetoric but re but living in reality and they're seeing the double standards yeah because it's their senses like you said they see it they feel it they, i mean it just you you can't get it out of your head you you got them telling you one thing but uh, their personal experience their personal senses are telling them another People are going to go with their senses. I mean, that's just human nature. As you said, well, my, they go to the grocery store, they go to the gas pump, they feel it. Well, my favorite thing is how they're, they're now pushing, you know, because they're so obsessed with climate change right now. Global pandemic, you know, economy is, is, is tanking. They're obsessed with the climate. Okay, now they're telling every, every mother and, and every parent, go out and just come up with thousands of dollars and buy an electric vehicle. That'll yeah. solve the gas problem. Yeah. Because, yeah. because we right now there are people just sitting on, you know, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to go buy an electric car. Yeah. This is this I is agree. out of touch with you are. I agree. So one of the things that's disturbed me, uh, Paris, is this nomination of Sali Omarova, which has been withdrawn. But the fact that they even uh, the president nominated someone who's so radical and by her own admission, a card carrying communist. We just talked about Senator Blumenthal recently attending a communist event where he was a speaker and laying on the praise on this organization. Are they lurching that hard, that far to the left now? Uh, no, they're not lurching that far. They will pass lurching. <laughs> they are, they're there. <laughs> they are, they're that far. And this is the thing. They think the American people are stupid. They think that, that we won't watch. They think that we're not vigilant. They think we're yeah. not paying attention. But we are. We're yeah. listening. We're watching. And we're, we're looking at who they're appointing. This is not the first person that they tried to appoint that they had to withdraw. You know, Lena Tandra was another one who's out of control, extreme yep. liberal, and they had to withdraw. And they just gave her some appointment, uh, you know, internally at the White House that didn't have to go through Senate confirmation. But time and time again, they're putting these radical leftist, socialist, and even communist people for these positions, just hoping that the American people ignore it and hoping that these people in Congress, especially in the Senate, don't have the political will and backbone to stand up and say, no, ask the tough questions. But time, time, the time is up for that foolishness. And I think more and more people are saying, we do not want to have people in office that have an agenda and a mindset and a worldview that is far beyond where the American people are. 
But I totally sadly, agree. that's where the Democrats are. And the people that are running this country in the Democrat Party leadership, they can talk about being moderates all they want to, but they're not. They're not moderates. Um, and anybody who votes on the Democrat side that thinks that they're going to put in somebody who's going to be a moderate, that they're not going to be a moderate because when they get to Washington, D.C., that caucus that they're going to have to... I agree. Dream. I agree. Always enjoy uh, having you on the program, Paris. Uh, you have a, a great holiday season, a Merry Christmas, and we'll talk to you soon. We enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to everybody.